Video shows a commotion inside as those who appear to be in the back get agitated and try to figure out what's happening. Which is it's ridiculous. This is this should not happen. Hey, Have you been waiting to hear more information about the court case involving Young Thug? Well, you wouldn't be alone, but you'd also be someone who would need to keep waiting. But to ask somebody to step away from their life and what they care about for six or nine months, I'm surprised that there's anybody saying that's not a hardship. And that is why it's taking so long. How is that? Well, the court case for Young Thug under the RICO Act in Georgia technically started at the end of last year and has been going on throughout 2023 so far. So why hasn't there been anything going on with it? Because there's been so much weird stuff going on that it's been impossible to proceed. And if you don't believe us, then you merely need to look at what's happened in the last few days. We'll break it down for you, but first, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell icon so you never miss an upload from us. And with that being said, let's get straight into the video. The Lawyer Incident Young Thug's YSL Rico case continues to make headlines as one of the defense lawyers has been threatened with jail time and contempt of court. On Monday, Judge Euro Glanville became terse with attorneys Anastasio Manetas and Eric R. Johnson, who are representing YSL affiliates Miles Farley and Christian Eppinger, after Manetas was ordered to buy lunch for all the lawyers in the case but did not oblige the request. The judge noted the attorney was fined $250, which he paid, but it remains unclear why Manetas was threatened with contempt of court over the situation. Judge Glanville later told Manetas and Johnson they would have to complete a 17-page essay on the importance of professionalism and treating one's opponent with civility, arguing that if it was incomplete by April 28th, they'd be sentenced to almost a month behind bars. April 28th at noon, or you do 20 days, Judge Earl Glanville told Johnson in part, as recorded by the Law and Crime Network. So yeah, that's a threat that they'd be wise to comply on or else get thrown in jail. And who wants that? And remember, this was basically about not buying lunch. That's just mean. The Juror Issues The bizarre moment comes as a juror selection for Young Thug's YSL case continues to drag on, with many potential jurors being ineligible for jury duty due to strange circumstances. Thug's lawyer, Brian Steele, recently claimed that a potential juror had even attempted to reach out to him. Thug's lawyer, Brian Steele, recently claimed that a potential juror had even attempted to reach out to him via email. While the contents of the message weren't disclosed during the hearing, it was enough for the judge to order an investigation. Atlanta Journal-Constitution reported that Judge Earl Glanville was substantially widening the pool of potential jurors in order to find enough who actually qualify. Judge Glanville thinks we'll need 500 to 600 jurors in the pool after hardships. Reporter Shadi Abu Said tweeted back in February, of those, we'll need to qualify close to 100 folks before strikes. More groups of jurors being brought in February 24th, March 17th, April 28th, and May 19th. Abu Said added, the jury selection process has been brutal on Thugga since it began on January 9th. Many potential jurors are reportedly concerned with the length of the trial, which they've been told could last as long as six to nine months. Remember that when you're on jury duty, you are getting paid, but you're very much restricted on what you can do and sometimes even where you can go. And it's so bad, and so it's bad enough when you have jury duty summons for a regular case or one of smaller charges, but one that involves a famous rapper and a Rico charge, that's worse much worse. So you can understand why many people wouldn't want to leave their jobs or lives for six to nine months to deal with a rapper they could care less about. And if you think that's where things ended on the craziness scale, you'd be wrong. The Screaming Chaos unfolded Wednesday during a recess in the trial involving alleged members of the Young Slime Life gang. Channel 2 action news cameras were in the courtroom when someone started screaming behind chamber doors, and some people in the courtroom became agitated. Wouldn't you if someone started randomly screaming nearby and you had no idea what was going on? Young Thug was sitting at a table in the center of the courtroom as the drama unfolded. At least three people in the room were handcuffed and escorted out. It's unclear if they were other defendants in the case or spectators. Everyone chill, court officer said. Clear the room. Clear the courtroom. Officers then cleared the courtroom. Investigative reporter Mark Ween was in the courtroom and talked to defense attorneys who said defendants Rodalius Ryan had been escorted out of the courtroom when he started screaming from the holding cell area. Defendants Christian Eppinger and Coradrius Dorsey then stood up and yelled for the officers to let Ryan out of the holding cell. He didn't do anything wrong, one of them yelled. Eppinger's attorney, Eric Johnson, said Eppinger stood up because Ryan is his good friend and he was concerned for Ryan's safety. All of a sudden, they take Mr. Ryan, the young child, I mean, he's a kid. They take him to the back and we can hear him screaming. An attorney for Dorsey told Wynn, We can hear him in the courtroom yelling for help and we're all confused. The attorney told Wynn that right about the time that Ryan was escorted out, an officer who had earlier had an alleged altercation with Ryan was scheduled to take the stand. It's unclear if that's why he was escorted out. So yeah, when you add that to everything that's been 
going on in the case, can you blame people for thinking that this is never going to end? The charges. Thug faces eight charges, including conspiracy to violate the RICO Act and two counts of participation in criminal street gang activity, along with multiple drug and weapons offenses. As Young Thug waits for his trial to begin, the YSL leader was allegedly granted a temporary release from prison earlier this month to mourn the passing of his older sister, Angela Greer. Thug's other sister, Dolly White, seemed to confirm Greer's passing when she reshared a post of Greer that had been initially uploaded by Lil' Keith's mother. The cause of death remains unclear. Some might have issues with that, but there are some situations where you need to be mindful of personal feelings and situations. He was sent back after the funeral, and it's fair for him to mourn his family, especially since, in this context, he hasn't been convicted of a crime just yet, only charged. More updates. Metro Boomin recently offered fans an update on Young Thug and revealed his longtime friend and collaborator has his thoughts set on his life post-release. This happened on March 10th, with a throwback photo of him and Thugger in the studio. He hinted at the Young Stoner Life Records founder's optimism in his caption. Talk to spider emoji today, and just know when he touched down, the whole earth emoji gon' feel it. Bicep flex emoji. The update comes a little over a month after Metro Boomin spoke to DJ Drama's The Streets Is Watching podcast about their ongoing communications, and weeks after Young Thug's ongoing RICO trial suffered another setback. We'll get to those later. During the chat from before, he noted the following, I be talking to him, he's blessed man. He said at the time, anybody know Slime know he got a heart of gold, but he got the heart of a warrior at the same time. So like, he got his head up, and I pray for him every single day. Even since everything first happened, I pray for him every single day. He continued, the day he got locked up, he was supposed to be in the superhero video. He had a whole scene set up where he was going to save the tag and do some other shit. I remember talking to him on the FaceTime. He was like, yeah, I'm going to pull up. Man, greatly. I be talking to him. How's he doing? Man, he's blessed, man. Anybody know Slime, like, he got a heart of gold, but he got the heart of a warrior mm -hmm. at the same time. So like, he got his head up. So if this is to be believed, Young Thug thinks he'll be out soon. Those in his trial would say otherwise. The prison photo. Another update actually came from Young Thug himself. Young Thug appears to be using his time in jail productively, as he has flexed his physical transformation in a new photo taken behind bars. The rapper's sister, Dolly White, took to her Instagram story to share a photo of Thug flexing one of his bicep muscles on a video call. My heart. She wrote alongside the photo of them smiling together. Should we be impressed with Young Thug working out in prison? Well, you can make of it what you will. After all, what else is he's supposed to do in there. A while back, Lil Woody allegedly snitched on YFN Lucci and his crew. This was shown through a video that leaked onto the internet a while back. Moreover, the clip sees Woody talk with presumably two lawyers, officials, or colleagues about a murder that's apparently going to happen. Furthermore, the two interrogators struggled to get information out of him regarding his knowledge. However, many online presumed that this information led to further investigations and actions from law enforcement. Despite the ongoing court struggles of both Lucci and Thug, it's unclear in which case this information will land. Not only that, but the two beefing camps faced changes and alterations thanks to the other's involvement. For example, the court pushed back Lucci's trial so that he could potentially testify in the YSL RICO case. YFN Lucci's trial was due to begin January 9th, same as Young Thugs. Atlanta reporter George Cheedy tweeted, The YFN gang and RICO case is just as wide-ranging as the YSL case. The two are connected. Lucci's a witness, but Lucci's trial date has been postponed, his attorney said. No new court date has been set. Still, the Everyday We Lit rapper's legal team denied his participation in Thugs' case. And here we go, Cheedy further reported. For clarification, Lucci is on the state's witness list. That doesn't mean he's going to testify, but he could still be called. Don't at me with questions about snitching, I don't care. Moreover, he faces charges of murder and gang activity. Also, he claimed to be a stabbing victim in a plot set out by YSL to take him down. Meanwhile, this conversation around snitching in YSL usually revolves around its own members taking plea deals. However, Lil Rod's father recently testified that the district attorney promised him freedom if he snitched on Young Thug. Miss Willis went down to that jail and told my son, if he stated in a video clip. Listen to what I say. I ain't telling you what I heard. I'm telling you what I know. If he say Thug gave him $10,000 to that boy, then we'll let you out of jail. So there's a lot to process here. As according to the video that's been posted, Lil Woody might have been snitching on his crew for the past 11 years. Though that would raise the question of, well, if he's been snitching, why has nothing come of it until now? The answer to that may be that the case wasn't strong enough at the time. As some stated, the information he may have gave to these alleged law enforcement people may not have been viable for one reason or another. But then again, and Rico cases sometimes take many years to make and then prosecute. They could have easily been biding their time until they knew they could get someone like Young Thug, as he's the alleged leader of the gang, on the hook for something big. So there are clearly many moving parts and missing pieces to help make sense of all of this. We'll likely have to wait and see where this all goes. And there you have it, everyone. 
a look at what's happening and not happening with Young Thug and why things continue to get weirder and weirder with this case. Can you believe that things have been held up because of situations like with the lawyer? What do you think will be the next thing that happens in this trial? Will this thing ever get started? Let us know what you think in the comments down below. Be sure to subscribe and we'll see you next time on the channel.